I can tell you right now, some of y'all are not gonna like what I have to say, but that's real talk. What's up y'all, it's Rachel Elizabeth and you're watching Real Talk with Rach, where we talk about real things because it's the real, honest, hard, vulnerable things that get us deeper in relationship with others and deeper in intimacy with God. Y'all, there's been so much going on and really I feel like this week in particular, the Lord has given me clarity for things that he's been doing for the last three months. And honestly, I think it's pretty relatable for most of us because it's about the upside down nature of the kingdom of God and it's about kingdom rest, rest that doesn't actually make sense to our human nature and to our flesh. And I also feel like the Lord's been teaching me about this kind of rest for a couple of years now, maybe more than that. But I'm not just gonna talk about rest today. I wanna talk about God and I wanna talk about how amazing he is for leading us into a place of kingdom rest because it's for our good, it's for our best, and it's the most productive place that we can live. And it's sourced in him, as is every other good thing. So I'm gonna start off by telling you something that Holy Spirit whispered to me on Friday morning, October 2nd of this year. I was a little over a month into one of the busiest seasons I have ever been in with the Lord. And this, coming out of one of the least busy seasons I've ever been in with the Lord. So you can probably understand when I say it was a little bit of a shock to the system. So here I am, it's October 2nd, and I am struggling because as great as I truly am with time management and planning, the Lord is asking me to rest and trust Him to do the time management and the planning. And I know some of you are already questioning this because there are good aspects of time management and planning. Organization is wonderful, but what I'm specifically getting at is the sort of time management and planning that creates an atmosphere of stress and high stakes and striving, really. And only the Holy Spirit can point out in your heart and in your life when that's happening. But here is what he said in that context. As in making breakfast, I hear Holy Spirit say, put your steps aside. Greater are the blessings of the one who listens than of the one who takes a single word and runs. Take time and I will reveal everything that you need. And then immediately after that, in the context of this lesson of kingdom rest, when I'm asking the Lord about being productive and everything I have to do and how am I gonna get it all done, he tells me this, and then he gives me this pure, beautiful image of a couple making love. Don't worry, there's no weird details going on here, but it was just a moment. It was a revelation moment where I realized, okay, he's showing me a picture of this. What is he talking about? And immediately I got this revelation. Sex is for reproduction. And hear me out, because you need to hear all of it before you can hear what I'm saying and what he's trying to say through it. Sex is productive. It is intended for reproduction. It is how the human race carries on. This is how we multiply. And yet, God intended sex for connection, for intimacy between two spouses, and for pleasure. Not only that, but the way he intended it, it requires rest. It often requires intentionality and time and in this download, in this image, he showed me that this is what he's trying to teach me, is that we are the most productive when we are living from a place of rest and connection and intimacy with him. It's coming from a place of love and trust. It's pleasurable and it doesn't rush. It's patient. It's 1 Corinthians 13. <laughs> that is profoundly beautiful. And I pray that the Holy Spirit opens your hearts to understand the same revelation he gave me through that without offense and without shame. Because within covenant, sex is God's idea. And he often uses things that we can understand to communicate revelation of heavenly realities to our human minds and to our hearts. So here I am in this season where I'm trying desperately to figure out how to get it all done. This is a hectic season, and I'm sure so many of you can relate. Even in the midst of COVID, it's the chaos of what's swirling around us in the atmosphere, in the news, in the media, social media, your heart, your mind, your family, your relationships, your job or lack thereof. This is a crazy time to live in. And yet he's choosing this season to teach me about the productivity of rest 
And so I want to keep going with what he's been showing me this week in particular. For me, as a full-time student at Bethel Conservatory of the Arts, I am, at the end of my fall semester, in the middle of finals weeks. And I say finals weeks because some of them happened last week and some of them are happening this week. Last Wednesday, I was in a full-on anxiety swirl, not for lack of knowing how to cast my anxiety on Jesus. My mind was simply out of control, trying to take control of planning and making sure all my T's were crossed and my I's were dotted and my to-do list was set for the next two weeks to know what I have to do when to have it done in time for the day it's due. It was a nightmare. You do not want to experience my mind when that happens. So in the middle of this swirl, I went to meet with one of my teachers and she simply started asking me questions totally and completely led by the Holy Spirit because there was so much peace and so much grace on them. And what she told me is that when that happens, I need to let it go. Let go of the need to perform all things excellently in the perfect way according to my plan. Side note, there's nothing wrong with excellence. There's nothing wrong with keeping your word and turning things in on time. But sometimes the motive behind those good things is actually rooted in lies about what you believe about God or what you believe about yourself. And it turns out in that moment, when we got to the root of what it was, it was pride. And I got the opportunity to repent Y'all, repentance is a privilege and it is beautiful because it's that moment that the weight comes off of you and falls on the cross where Jesus already finished it and took it all. It's where you remember that your sin is not your identity and that he sees you in his righteousness. So I was so grateful for that moment as I realized that I was trying to produce something from a need to earn love, earn acceptance, earn approval, earn affirmation. So underneath it all was just the fact that I was believing a lie that I still had to earn these things, that the blood of Jesus wasn't enough, and that, my friends, is a lie. So this was a beautiful moment of revelation for me, that the love of God isn't just for me from him, but it's also for me from him so that I can love myself like that. And I hope that you're hearing me with a personal lens, that everything I'm telling you is for you too. My experience, my testimony is something that God wants to reveal to you as well, especially if you can relate in this season. But what's more than that is that just that morning, I had come out of a class called Wholehearted Artist, and the theme of the day we were talking through was trust. And there was a verse that came up, Proverbs 3, and our teacher read it to us from the Passion Translation. Honestly, you guys, I love that verse. It is one of my favorites but I don't think I've ever read it slowly, meditatively from the Passion Translation, and it just opens up a whole new level of understanding. So I'm gonna read that to you, but as I read it, I want you to hear what it's asking of us in trust and what it's saying about wisdom. Trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. With all your heart, rely on Him to guide you and He will lead you in every decision you make. Become intimate with him in whatever you do, and he will lead you wherever you go. Do not think for a moment that you know it all, for wisdom comes when you adore him with undivided devotion and avoid everything that's wrong. Then you will find the healing and refreshment your body and spirit long for. Remember that my teacher told me to let it go, to let go and trust God and let him lead us Everything this passage is telling us, that is the refreshment my soul was looking for. She told me to let go. This is exactly what the Lord was speaking through her. And it was only later that I realized that her words confirmed what he was trying to say through this passage earlier that same day. And my friends, this is one of the beautiful ways that our God speaks to our hearts. It's repetition through people and circumstances in our daily lives. But let's talk a little bit more about wisdom because I believe that is something the Lord is on in this moment. Something that he is calling us into with urgency and importance in love and with patience. The wisdom of the Lord is so valuable that just a chapter before in Proverbs chapter 2, it tells us to seek wisdom as we would sterling silver, pure gold, hidden riches and treasures. 
Think of anything in this life that you have pursued and gone after without relenting. Nothing could stop you from going after that thing. It could be a relationship, it could be a job, it could be a dream, it could be a number of things, but God is asking us in this time to seek wisdom with that same fervor. And the only reason you wouldn't seek wisdom with that same urgency and fervor is if you didn't understand the value of wisdom or its value to God. So I'm going to share with you from 1 Kings chapter 3. King Solomon had recently become king. He loved the Lord and obeyed him. And God gave him a dream. So I'm going to read this starting in verse 5. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. What would you ask God for in that moment? Honestly, anything that comes to mind right now. Verse 6, Solomon answered, You've shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a child and do not know how to carry out my duties. See, that humility is so beautiful. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? He's asking for wisdom. The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both riches and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. Solomon could have asked for anything, and he asked for wisdom. And because he asked for wisdom, the Lord was so impressed that he not only gave him wisdom, made him one of the wisest men that has ever lived, but he also gave him riches, long life, fame. The Lord honors those who seek wisdom. And to wrap this up, I want to share from Proverbs 2, which happens to be the passage the Lord put on my heart right before the class where we talked about Proverbs 3. So listen to this, and while you do, I want you to hear it as if God is speaking it directly to you. My child, will you treasure my wisdom? Then, and only then, will you acquire it. And only if you accept my advice and hide it within, will you succeed. So train your heart to listen when I speak, and open your spirit wide to expand your discernment. Then pass it on to your sons and daughters. Yes, cry out for comprehension and intercede for insight. For if you keep seeking it, like a man would seek for sterling silver, searching in hidden places for cherished treasure, then you will discover the fear of the Lord and find the true knowledge of God. Wisdom is a gift from a generous God, and every word he speaks is full of revelation and becomes a fountain of understanding within you. For the Lord has a hidden storehouse of wisdom made accessible to his godly lovers. He becomes your personal bodyguard as you follow his ways, protecting and guarding you as you choose what is right. Then you will discover all that is just, proper, and fair and be empowered to make the right decisions as you walk into your destiny. When wisdom wins your heart and revelation breaks in, true pleasure enters your soul. And it goes on to say how wisdom is actually protection. But if you really heard what I shared with you in the very beginning, what God said to me, he told me not to take one word he says and then run with it, but actually take the time to listen. The words that come from God, from time resting in his presence without distractions, sitting and listening to his voice, reading his word, meditating on it, and waiting for him to speak. Those words are more valuable than any treasure. He is the treasure. Not only that, but he himself is what you will gain because he is the spirit of wisdom. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He will lead you down the path that he has for you. And you don't have to worry about the steps. He said, give me your steps and sit with me. It's Psalm 23. It's allowing him to make you lay down by green pastures so that he can restore your soul. He is the solution. He is the power to overcome. Anything there's a struggle in simply requires a humble, teachable heart that loves opportunity to repent. A heart and mind that are willing to shut out everything else, to sit in the discomfort long enough to let him search your heart, to find the root of really what's going on that's keeping you from resting, where you can be the most productive. 
and experience the most satisfaction and the most refreshment and the most pleasure and see him work miracles in the practicals of your life. So I feel the Lord asking us, many of you, to give him your steps, to give him your planner, to turn off the TV, to turn your phone off or put it on airplane mode and give him your time. Ask him to teach you how to rest. He is your source. He is the solution to every problem you have. If you'll just take the time to seek him with the same energy that you would use to seek the thing that you want the most. Wisdom is a gift from a generous God and every word he speaks is full of revelation and becomes a fountain of understanding within you. My child, will you treasure wisdom? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and share it with a friend who needs it. And I want to ask you to consider becoming a patron to support this channel for a dollar a month. There's a link to that below. I love you and I'm praying for you. Have a great week.